Hey guys, so my perspective on Mythic Markets is a little different. Now the co-founder of Mythic Markets, the person who has been very vocal and has done actual interviews saying that this is a like a stock, like the stock markets, they were able to raise $2 million. I don't know what percent of equity was exchanged, maybe 10%, I would assume, I would guess 10%, maybe more, but they're valuing their company at more than $2 million. And I can't imagine they gave half the company away for $2 million. Therefore, the company value is much higher than anyone can even guess right now. Their co-founder, there's three of them on LinkedIn. I have researched all three of them, and none of them have done anything worthwhile, in my opinion. And this is a company whose sole purpose is to sell to investors and those investors then sell to new investors for more money and they exit out. So Social Leverage, the company the one of the co-founders is from, is a company with an exit of 29, 29 exits. Now Social Leverage is a real company and therefore that's why he was, in a couple of years, he was a associate. The fact that he is trying to connect the two is very interesting. This guy has no unique talents. He's not very good at marketing. And honestly, I don't think this company will ever make a profit, but that's okay. WeWork also never made a profit and it was going to IPO at $47 billion, maybe 180 days ago. Now it's being sued by everybody, including the former CEO, including tenants, including landlords, including investors, current investors. Because it has been, it has gone all the way down to two point nine mil, billion dollars. So how do you lose? How do you lose forty four billion dollars in the blink of an eye? And it wasn't due to the pandemic because they actually went down to ten million dollars before that. The pandemic, of course, didn't help, but they lost at least thirty billion dollars. It's because it's an investment game, and this is what they're playing. You see, they're giving away an alter commission. Yet they show you pictures of dual lands. Four of them. What? That's not what you're getting. No one's getting a commissioned dual uh, uh, underground sea, right? That doesn't make any sense. They're using this very crass, very basic marketing technique of giveaways. And they want to promote that the giveaway is actually of higher value than it is. So the giveaway is they're going to pay a commission. So I commission uh, cards to be altered all the time, and it's like very cheap. But when they use the card, like an underground C or a play set of them, and say, hey, you can win, a com you know, and then they, of course they say a commission, but it's very deceptive. So it's not a lie. It's not a flat out lie, but they know that by putting the dual lands there, including four underground seas, four volcanics, that they are implying that you could win this. When in fact, you're just winning a commission, which is probably, what, $30, maybe less. That's how much I pay my, I pay to get my cards commissioned, especially if it's just extended. You know, those, if it's just a simple commission, I pay 25 to $35 for a card to be commissioned. So they want to portray that you can win a play set of underground seas, hence why they put the picture of underground seas and the volcanic islands. But in actuality, you, the prize that you're winning is much less value because it doesn't include the actual card. And then they make these really crazy statements. Big news for fractional shares watchers today. A string of major investments, they call it investments, in the MTG 94 box over a few hours has surged us over 50% equity, sold mark. Don't miss out. But like how long does it, like here is the crazy part. They can act and behave like a real business, but instead their marketing portrays them to be something they're not. They're intentionally, for stock holding reasons, for invest future investment reasons, they're intentionally pretending to be something they're not so they can generate more interest. So they don't actually care if a magic player buys this. They're assuming that that answer is no. Because like Rudy said, you will have to be a millionaire to really be able to own any of these stocks. What they care about, what they care about is the valuation. 
how much is this company worth because we're going to sell the next 10% at let's say $5 million. And that's what slow venture, third kind venture and global founders, that, that's what they want. They want to exit. So social leverage exited not 29 times making money for all the initial investors every single time. They don't need magic players to buy these the product. What they need is they need to generate interest. They need to generate uh, SEO. It really is like this random dude who worked at a social venture whose background is not that good. Let me actually Google his background a little bit and read it to you. It's not like a genius. The dude's not a genius, right? He's, in my opinion, a below average marketer. I mean, in a couple of years, if you can't make partner or senior manager, you can't even make management. I don't want to talk about like senior management. If you can't even make management, you are, um, it doesn't make any, like why would we trust you with this company? But he probably had the connections, he had the contacts, and he has raised a ton of money. Okay, here we go. Joseph Mahojiovanji. Uh, he has 1,375 followers. <laughs> Trash. Absolute garbage. I have 50,000 followers. Mythic Markets has 40 followers. I have my marketing agency at 3,100. Co-founder and CEO Mythic Markets, December 2017, present. Social leverage, three years, four months. He was a... Producer, organized Palooza Social Leverage Annual LP Conference. He was an analyst. Then he became an analyst. So in February 2015 to April 2015, he was a producer, whoever what that means. He was an analyst. And then he became an associate uh, in July 2016 to May 2018. Before, he was a podcaster. What the F? Is that a real job? Adventures in startup as told by the founder startup and VC. So this is like probably a hobby. He was founder of founder product Padwar V, recruited hacker and designer co-founders to start the next startup, next accelerator by Google for entrepreneurs. It's such trash, dude. Senior product manager, product manager, Product manager, co-founder, product biz community guy of Yapsi. None of these companies he founded, like, why? He finds it for a year. So Yapsi was August 2010 to April 2012. What happened to Yapsi? Gee, like, holy blank. He was a co-founder, CEO of Episaurus LLC. He was a mobile application content manager. He was a business development IT creative consultant average tester of Blue Tees games. Dude, this guy has been doing this forever. He has a psychology degree from University of California, San Diego, 2002-2004. Uh, he has a psychology degree from College of Marin from 1999 to 2002. So the question is, would you invest in this guy? Um, I get, I get um, requests to invest my company all the time. I turn them down because we make profit. We don't need to play this investment game. Like I think he needs to play this investment game. So essentially, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. This is his 19th job that he lists on LinkedIn. This is his effing 19th job. The dude cannot stay at a job for more than like a year for the most part. And this is who we're going to trust with our money. I, I don't get it. Like, I don't know why any investor would give him money. Like, it doesn't make any sense. This is not going to work for all the reasons Alpha Investment Rudy told you it's not going to work. And plus, he's not the right person. He is frankly not the right person. You need someone actually good at marketing. What they've been doing, PR, Newswire, and uh, Ask Me Anything, an investor would have to be re 
No, I can't say it. That investor would have to be an idiot to invest in this company. And free people already invested $2 million at some type of valuation that was probably less than 50%. So whatever they want, their next exit, there's no hope for this company. There is no hope for this company. Maybe it sells to some other dummy down the road, but my gosh, anyone involved in this company, from my understanding, the investors or the stockholder, whatever, it's not even stock. Like you're not owning, you don't own anything. You don't own anything. And they can just abuse your money anytime they want to. And then they give these charts. I mean, it's such a bad idea. It's such a bad idea. But somebody gave them $2 million before they even sold anything to try the idea out. But that's all they're getting. Yeah, that's all they're going to get. The person managing this isn't, in my opinion, highly intelligent. Not based on his background. Not based on his degrees or his accomplishments. And he has an inability to stay at one company for a very long time. Now... Maybe he's wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he sold all those companies for billions of dollars, but I don't think so. Anyway, hi guys.